Welcome to uh, Old Guy Physics, and uh, this uh, particular episode is on concave and convex lenses. Okay, one of the things that we should remember because this is the second half of this, we did mirrors uh, last week, and so there's a lot of similarities about the things that we need to know about the lenses that's similar to what we learned about the mirrors. For example, let me write this right here. The characteristics, the characteristics are the same. So we had one, two, three, four right there. The first characteristic that we talked about was right side up or upside down. We talked about virtual versus real. We talked about size and we talked about location. So these same four characteristics will be found in these diagrams just like they were when we did the mirrors. Okay, so let's get started with the, uh, the first uh, kind of lens. The first kinds of lens is called a convex lens and it has this particular shape. There are several places that these lenses are found. They're found, for example, in your eye, the lens that's in your eye is convex. The lens that you have in most telescopes or binoculars are, are convex. And a magnifying glass is a convex lens. And so when we draw these diagrams, you're going to see that the lines that we drew for mirrors are going to be very similar to the ones that we're going to draw for the lens. Now, before I actually draw the lines, I want to establish a couple of ground rules. Number one, notice that the labeling for the diagram is different. Uh, right here, we would have had a C for center, but on this diagram, we're using 2F and F. But if you think about it, 2F is twice the focal length, which is, is the same distance as what we would have used for the center on the mirror. So another thing that we want to establish is that it's going to be numbered like a number line. So if the center of the lens is at zero, let's say that this is negative 10 and negative 20 and positive 10 and positive 20, and it's numbered like a number line, and so we can establish where our images are located based on where the object is. The next thing that we want to do is, let, and I'm going to just pick a spot, and I'm going to say, here's my object. Here's the object. And it's at 15 centimeters away from the lens. Now, we're going to say that all object distances are positive. I know that it's over here on the negative side of the number line, but object distance is always positive. So we'll, we'll put, I'll put a plus here to remind you of that. The next thing that we need to see is that on a mirror, the light bounced off the mirror and then reflected back through the focal point, whereas in this situation, the light is going to pass through the lens and it's going to go through the focal point on the other side. So when we do this, we're going to draw two lines to find the image. The first line we draw goes in parallel till it hits that vertical center line that I've got drawn there. And then it's going to refract, it's going to bend through the focal point on the other side, which is uh, labeled F prime. And I'm going to extend that line a little farther. And so line number one is going in parallel and then it's going through the focal point on the other side. The second line is one of my favorite lines because it doesn't actually show any bending it is going to pass right through the very center of the lens. And so I drew a dot on the center of the lens, and it's going to go just like this. It's tip of the arrow, center of the lens, to where they intersect over here. And you can see, if we extend this out a little bit, there is your image right there. Now, once we establish where the image is located, then we can start figuring out the characteristics of the image. For example, you can see, based on what the object looks like, this one's 
upside down. So we would establish it's upside down. And as we talked about with mirrors, if it's upside down, it's automatically real because upside down and real are tied together, just like right side up and virtual are tied together. And then we can see that this arrow is quite a bit longer than the original one, so we would say that this is larger. And then last but not least, you would say that it's located outside of 2F prime because it's out past 2F prime. Now, once we do the math, then we can establish the specific location in terms of centimeters away from the, from the lens. The formula looks like this. 1 over F minus 1 over DO equals 1 over DI. And like the mirrors, I've got the focal length is at 10, so 1 over 10 minus 1 over 15 equals 1 over DI. Now, this should, you should remember that what we did was we first solved for a common denominator. So we multiply these two together and we get a common, de dom a common denominator, excuse me, of 150. Then the 15 goes here and the 10 goes there. So we've got 15 here minus 10 here. And now we, since we have a common denominator, we can just subtract and 15 minus 10 is going to be 5. So that answer is going to be 5 over 150. And you'll remember we flip it. So that means it's 150 over 5, which is 30. And if you look at this, if that's 10 and that's 20, that's approximately 30 centimeters from the lens. Does everybody understand? Okay, now let's go over here to this diagram. Again, it's still a convex lens, but now I want to show you how to draw the lines for when the lens is acting like a magnifying glass. Okay, in order for us to have a magnifying glass type image, you've got to put the object, let me get a different color here, you've got to put the object in front of the focal point. Just like when you're looking at an ant in a magnifying glass, you, you get that magnifying glass close and then you pull it back ever so slightly to get that magnified view. <clears throat> the lines are still the same. We're going to draw a line in that hits the center line and then it goes through the focal point on the other side. So line number one looks like that. Line number two is going to go through the center, just like the other diagram we showed. And so I've got line number one and line number two. As soon as you see that, that diagram right there, you should be saying to yourself, well, these two lines are never going to intersect on this side of the diagram, and that would be right. What we need to do is we need to take our ruler and set it back on the line and we're going to do a little dotted line back like this and we're going to do a little dotted line back like this and where those images are intersecting back here, where those lines intersect back here is where the image is going to be and there's our magnified view of what we were talking about. Now. The map works the same way, the lines went the same way, but now look at the, in, the characteristics. It's right side up, so it's virtual. It's larger than the original object, and it's located behind the object, somewhere close to where F is on this side. And then we can do the math. If we had, had put some numbers in here, we could have done the math and solved for the image distance in terms of running that same calculation like that. And it actually comes out now.